life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello. Hello. I am Lainey. I am Marshall. And you are listening to our November book wrap-up, mm. reading top five books of November, books we read, etc. It's called Beat the Book. Beat the Book. We are a little late this month, mostly because we're busy and it's the holidays. And I think also you're going to hear a lot more bookish content from us this month, so... Make sure you stay tuned for that, because it should be pretty fun. So in this podcast, we're going to talk to you about my top five books and Marshall's top five books of the month of November. Mm -hmm. Although, how many books total did you read this month? This month, I read 16 books. That's basic for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. I usually read about 16 or 17, but that kind of gives me a grand total of 195 books for the year. My first goal for Goodreads is 104, but my goal number two is 208. So I'm I'm probably going to get there by the end of this year for sure. Nice. I did seven books, which brings me up to 151. Still past the 104, so you're yeah, doing well. Yeah, much past 104. Doing well. Now, I will also say that all of the books that Marshall has in his top five list... I have read. <laughs> I yes. have read all of them and passed them on and said, you need to read these books. Although one of them is a little funny of a story as to why I read it, but right. we'll get there. Right, exactly. So do you want to lead off? I will lead off because I have one that's not in my top five, but I did give it five stars and I wanted to give it an honorable mention. It's not a basic book. It's actually a cookbook that was given to me for my birthday by, well, I think it, either for a birthday or one of our, our gift days, we do like a monthly like mini mm -hmm. gift days. And my husband gave me this book by Drew Barrymore, who is like one of my favorite people. She's very close in age to me, so I always feel like really connected to her. And this book is called Rebel Homemaker. It's about her, basically her life right now when she moved to New York simplified things down she has a big garden well it was big by new york standards <laughs> she has a lot of different recipes that she's written in this book with the help of one of her friends who i think is some kind of chef or food stylist or something like that and it was just such a good book and i really enjoyed reading it so i gave it five stars and i just wanted to mention it because it was very high on my list excellent but it wasn't a book book like if you if yeah. you know what i'm saying that's why I it's to say. it's textbook exactly kind of thing so my number five is the last graduate by naomi novick now we've also both read the first of this series this is the scholomance series the deadly education yeah deadly education was the first book yeah and this book i i gave it a three star Mm -hmm. But it's not because, oh, this is a bad book. It's because it didn't keep up the feeling of the first book. Right. I feel like she kind of lost herself a little bit while she was writing Right, this and one. it is the second book in a series of at least three. And I think even the middle of this just lagged. <laughs> yeah. There was a part where I was just, I was the same way. I was like, keep, okay, okay, we understand. Just keep it, keep it going. All right. And, and so this is like the, the senior year of the main character's in the Scalamans as they are going to have to fight their way through a wall of monsters in order to go back into the normal magical world. When you have to say normal magical world, there's a problem. <laughs> so they start to come to the realization that A, the school seems to have it out for the main character. Mm -hmm. And B, there's more going on. And that sounds really intriguing, but most of the book is spent with giving us status updates and then all of a sudden the last chapter is just go 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 with an ending that's almost mid-sentence yeah like when i got to that ending i was like wait what no what is this <laughs> and originally this was supposed to be a duology mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden it's a trilogy so i feel like somewhere in the middle of writing this book naomi novik went oh i have another book in this and stretched it out. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. 
My fifth favorite book of November is a book called Grave Reservations by Cherie Priest. And I wanted to read it because a lot of people were comparing it to Finlay Donovan is Killing It, which I loved, absolutely loved this book. But Grave Reservations, I did only give it four stars, but it was so fun. So it basically follows Lita, who is kind of a psychic in the way that she takes objects and can get a feeling from the objects and can help people through that feeling. And you open in this book where she, because she's also a travel agent of her own, I think she runs her own company, she has switched the flight of one of her clients and then called him after the fact to tell him and has to explain to him that the reason why she did it is because she had a feeling that he should not be on that flight. And really, how do you explain that, right? Without Mm -hmm. basically sabotaging your business. But this guy is a police detective and needs her help to solve a cold case. Um, What's also fun about this book is that she does this thing called clairvoyant karaoke in a bar (laughs) where she goes, picks someone out of the audience, holds something that's close to them and finds a song that matches the feeling she gets from that item and then sings it to them. And it's very meaningful to them. So for those of you who don't know, this is actually a a rather common kind of ability in a lot of psychic fiction called psychometry. Right. The ability to, or as they call it, touch no. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this is kind of like a fun take on it. Right. I really like that. How they decided to do this. I actually just finished reading a book, which will probably make my top five for the month of December, where there is a person who has that same exact ability and he uses it to help find people as well. Um, But yeah, I I thought that this book was super, super fun. um, And so that's why I give it four stars. And if you like Finlay Donovan is killing it, you'll probably like this book. It's great. On the note of how do you approach this without losing your business? If you can prove several times over that you avoided some sort of catastrophe, by keeping people off of certain flights, this is actually really good advertising. Which is kind of what happens. This is a (laughs) first book in a series. So she does, I think, continue to help people when she gets notoriety for the things that are happening in this book. So yeah, definitely. My number four is The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So this is another second in a series. The The Inheritance Inheritance Games. Games. Yeah. This one did also kind of suffer from sequelitis, but I enjoyed it more than The Last Graduate just because it it didn't feel as draggy. Mm-hmm. It kept things moving, and it did deal more with the background mystery, but didn't actually end up answering anything. Yeah, it really, really. didn't. <laughs> Because, you know, it's part of a series. And how do you keep the series going? Don't answer any questions. No, that's pretty much it. (laughs) It's got the same kind of good characters. The the boys of the family, the Hawthorne family, are just so heartwarming for, you know, spoiled rich boys. And there's this new introduction, like, her best friend from before she became rich has now joined up with the group. And she and the inventor brother are hitting it off so famously. And as soon as they meet each other, I'm like, oh, this is a ship right here. (laughs) This is a ship. It is a, it is sailing. Right. (laughs) So I I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. Oh, cool. The next book I read was one that I had been hearing so much about and everyone was raving about it. And it seemed like just the type of book that I would like. So I got it and I read it and I loved it. And it was called In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I did give it four and a half stars, not quite a five, but it was almost perfect. And basically this story is about a group of friends and they have a lot of secrets, but mostly one of their friends in college was killed. And another of the friends was blamed but he maintains that he is innocent and is trying to prove his innocence as one does right so you will see when they go back for their 10-year reunion that all of these things are falling apart and someone and i believe it's like the brother of the dead girl 
is finding these secrets and trying to figure out who really killed her. The story is told in the present, but also told in the past through the various six friends. And it, it, I could not put this book down. It was riveting. It was surprising. I only slightly guessed the ending, but it was, it very much lived up to the hype for me. Now, some people said it was overhype, whatever, but it was exactly the kind of like thriller, dark academia book that I just love reading. So definitely if you like that kind of book, you need to pick this book up. It is great. We're on to my number three. And this one comes with a little bit of a story. So those of you who listened to our earlier podcast from this year, you knew that I was playing a game called Book Tetris. And you play Book Tetris by selecting different genres and giving them different Tetris pieces and putting them all together. Now, the last time that I had cleared a line in Book Tetris was in July. (laughs) And yet, my Tetris field was almost completely full. Why? Because I had one thin area that only a four long block could fit in. And I'm like, oh no, I'm I'm ruined. I'm Tetris ruined. How am I (laughs) going to do this? And the main reason is, is because my long piece is for drama, historical fiction, comedy, or romance. These are things I don't often read. (laughs) I'm like, Lainey, I need one. And she's like, well, you know what? It's the holiday season, so I've got one for you. It's called In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. Now, this is the first Christina Lauren you have ever read, correct? Correct. I am not one for reading romances very frequently. And I don't often read comfy things. Often. So this would typically be like so far out of left field for me that I like this book. This is a five star. (laughs) You know, it was very surprising when I heard that he said that too, because I was like, oh, well, okay. Now I'm going to give you a bunch of other Christina Lauren to uh, add to your list because I personally really like, especially their more recent stuff. And they are coming out with a new book next year called Something Wilder, which I am also interested in reading. But I was like, yeah, man, add these other ones to your list. Soulmate Equation mm-hmm. goes on there. Unhoneymooners, you got you got to read these if you like them. So In a Holidays is kind of like Groundhog Day. Mm-hmm. The, the main character is going back in time every time she fails at, at something in order to get this particular weekend right. And it's about finding happiness, mm-hmm. but it's also about finding happiness for her family. Yes. And one thing that I appreciate in this book over Groundhog Day is that whenever she fails, she doesn't just continue on with her day and we cut there and then she wakes up the next morning and it's the same day over again. No, she dies. <laughs> she, Complete reset. <laughs> she gets final destination right then and there. And I, I thought this was like so great just because she never sees it coming. And then she's paranoid about it for the next day. It's hilarious. The characters are really good. And yeah, I, I just have no problems with this book. It, it was a really good book. I'm, I'm pleased that you are like that, yeah. that you liked it so much. So my next book is called The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Madalski. I think this came out like, what was it? Oh, it came out in April, but around about like Halloween time, everyone was reading this a lot more because of the Mary Shelley reference and because of what it's about. And I was like, okay, I'll read it, I think, you know, when I get around to it. And finally I did and legitimately gave it five stars. I loved this book so much. It is the story of a girl who goes to like a different high school and she ends up being friends in like a secret club that watches horror movies. Okay. But then they have tests. So they have like a, I don't remember they call them like an incident or whatever, where they have a target and they have to plan a scary situation. And the goal is to get the target to basically scream at the end of the situation. It's not supposed to be harmful to them. It's literally just a... Punked. Yeah, basically. So she finds out about it because she's goes to this party and and an incident happens while she's at this party and she figures out that they're doing this. 
So she becomes kind of a de facto part of this whole thing. And then they start becoming the target of things happening that are kind of horror related. And it just, it all kind of goes down from there. It's very creepy. I think this was another one of those I read in like a day because I couldn't mm. put it down. But it, it was fantastic. Really good. Okay, so when you're talking about this, the thing that I'm thinking of is Ninth House. Even though Ninth House has nothing to do with this, right. it, it's, it is this academic setting mm-hmm. and you've got these very horrific things and there's a there's this club I, i'm interested and mm-hmm. it's probably going to go on my list mm-hmm. it probably yeah that's what i'm <laughs> thinking should. of because you're going to constantly be left guessing as to whether what you're seeing is a punk or if it's real yes uh-huh okay. yes uh, <laughs> there Which are many good. many many twists in this book for sure that's most I never saw coming. That, I mean, that's just how well it's written. That's that's what I'm looking for. So my number one and my number two are somewhat related with each other. Because I just kind of, <laughs> you know, I'll go, okay, cool. Here, this book is next on my list. And I already have the next one available. I'm reading it now. <laughs> we have Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. That's my number two. And this continues the Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And in this one, she is now trying to investigate the disappearance of a classmate's brother. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's the trial of one of the boys from the previous book for rape. Right. Repeated date raping and using date rape drugs. So you have both of these things going on. But what I found really interesting in this book was watching her mental slide Mm. because it's a very subtle thing, but she's becoming more and more desperate in this book. Right. And it's not just desperateness for solving the case. It's desperate for herself and for being right and all that. I I thought this was really good. So, yeah, this is one of my five stars. You had already read this book as well. You've read the entire series. I've read this whole series, yes. Yeah. And this just interfaces so well with the next book. Uh Uh-huh. The next, which is, it seems to be the final book. Although there was a fourth book that's a prequel book. Yes. Although we'll talk about (laughs) that whole thing (laughs) when we get Mm -hmm. to your number one. So let's go to my number two. Now I'm going to tell you, my number one and my number two were actually very close. I read so many good books this month. And to be honest, this was my favorite book up until the very last book that I read Mm. in the month of November. And then it just popped out. So my number two book is The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is the chronologically second book in the Practical Magic series, but this is the fourth book that I have read. So it's after the book that I read, but before the movie that we watched. Correct. It is. And the reason why I wanted to read it besides finishing up the series was because they are coming out with a either a movie or a mini series based on this book. And I mm. wanted to get the background for it. It is beautifully written, just like Alice Hoffman's other books. It tells the story of Jet and Franny and Vincent. Vincent is their brother and how they grew up. Basically goes from when they were children all the way up until the moment that Sally's girls come to live with them. Okay. So almost all the way up to Practical Magic. And it, oh my gosh, the things that happen in this book are surprising and beautiful and really enlightening in the fact that when you see their story in Practical Magic, they are in the the throes of acceptance when it comes to their powers. They are confident in what they can do. They, they, you know, they are who they are. But in this book, they don't believe who they mm. are. They don't accept their magic. And they're trying to push it away and say, this is not us. And so this book really brings them around to accepting who they are on the inside and what magic really does mean for them. Hmm. So it is, it's just great. I highly recommend that you read this one though before you read the Book of Magic, which is the last one, the one that just came out this year. 
because there are some things that happen in Book of Magic that if you haven't read this book is a little bit of a spoiler. So make sure you read this one first. Got you. Yeah, yes. that's look really in- like I, I enjoy her writing style a mm-hmm. lot. It is very peaceful. Yes. And very beautiful. Even though there's lots of tension, and but there's also lots of other feelings flowing throughout there, and I really mm-hmm. like that yeah. about the writing style. All right, we're on to number ones. Number and my ones. number one is As Good as Dead, also by Holly Jackson, because this is the final one in the series of Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Although, and, <laughs> you say that. I feel like it really still is. I, I Yes, even though there are things that happen at the end of this book that really makes you want to be like, but, but, but no, I need more question mark. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I, I, I felt like that was a really good, clear ending. Now, after the events of good girl, bad blood, our, our little pip, she is traumatized. Mm-hmm. She has PTS the D and it is all over the place. She is all over the place. She doesn't, she is doing things that are unsafe unwise mm-hmm. and have has basically gone off the deep end and is trying to find one more case that has nothing to do with anything so that she can have a black and white I am a good person case mm-hmm. and the case that she goes after just spins right around and throws her right back into the same mess she was already in uh, yes and this ending just it did it for me i enjoyed this ending and the ride of this book (sighs) is crazy in my opinion the range of emotions that you go through Mm -hmm. for this book is exhausting and also fulfilling (laughs) satisfying there is still possibility yes there is possibility for more i could totally see another story happening in the last three pages Mm -hmm. during the time period covered in the last three pages. Exactly. I could totally see it. And then there's more stuff afterwards. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tell you what happened in the last three pages because, oh, break my heart. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But it was a great ending. It It was was a great ending. It was so excellent. And I'm looking to see more from Holly Jackson in the future. Yeah, for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, are you ready to hear about the book that toppled them all? I'm really surprised that one could. <laughs> that it's better than Rules of Magic? Yeah. Okay, so this book is one that had been on my list for a good three or four months. Heard amazing things about this book. It is marketed as Gossip Girl meets Get Out. Oh my. Yes. Yes. And it is called Ace of Spades, and I'm going to butcher this last, this name, and I'm really sorry. It's by Farida Abike Limede. 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 I'm really sorry. But that is the book, and I think that marketing is probably one of the most appropriate marketings I've heard for books this year. It is the story of two African-American students who go to a predominantly white private school. One of the girl is like basically the highest you can be in rankings academically. She's on track to be valedictorian. She's head prefect. She's been prefect like every single year. Uh, You know, she's up there. Then the guy, you know, he's got moderately okay grades and whatever. And he becomes prefect of like, he's one of the four under prefects of the senior class. And he, he gets like, what, why? <laughs> like, what have I done? And then all of a sudden they start getting like the entire school starts getting text messages of like secrets. And it has to do with a couple different students, actually like four or five different students in the senior class. And it starts to get worse and the secrets start to get worse Mm -hmm. and things happening to them start to get worse. And they're trying to figure out why they're being targeted. Of course, you immediately think it's racially inclined and, Mm -hmm. you know, get out. If you've seen Get Out, you know, you know what that is all about. This book, I, I, like I said, I devoured it in like a day. It was 
It was so, so amazing. So good. You don't know who to trust in this book. And I mean no one. Not even the main characters. You can't trust anything in this book. Okay. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it. Because it is, if I say anything else, I'm going to give it away. And it's it's just so, it's so good of a ride. Like, so good, guys. The hype, again, another one. The hype is out there. So definitely recommend that one. It was fantastic. Five stars. That sounds really fun, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Put it on your list. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. There's our top ten books for November. So do you have any plans for December? Well, yes. I do have... Uh, quite a few holiday books that I need to read, but I'm doing a couple challenges, one of which both Marshall and I are doing at Book Club. It's our Roll the Dice Challenge, which is making me read books that are not holiday books, and it's basically frustrating me right now because I need to read some holiday ones. I, yeah, in doing that challenge, I made one fatal mistake with my categories because I, you know, I made categories based off of the books that were actually on my TBR list. And then realized that after I would read one, I'd have to replace it Mm -hmm. with another book of the same category. And I'm like, darn it. I have three books of Dark Muppet. Yep. That's, um, I think that's pretty much all that exists. (laughs) Well, I gave you a bunch more you can add to your list. So there you go. (laughs) Wait, you you have more books about Muppets? Sure. Sure. I know I could probably find, um, I know that there was a Dark Crystal comic book series. Right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think loosely anything can be a Muppet. Man, novelization of Avenue Q. I'll be right there. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening to November. Make sure you stay tuned because we are going to, like I said, do a big book wrap up for December. Everything that we loved in 2021. We have plans to do stuff regarding the Goodreads challenge. And of course, we're also going to show you our most anticipated for 2022. So... Stay tuned for all of that goodness, because it is coming. Oh, yes. And you can't stop it. So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out.